Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go straight to the word of God this morning. Hallelujah. We are um, talking about gate, talking about door. And this morning, I'm going to uh, share with you what the Lord has put in my spirit. Hallelujah. So that we will, will go to Amen. So you can st stand on your feet for the, for the reading of the word. Let's go to the book of John. John um, 10 verse 9. Amen. John 10 verse 9. I am the door. Mm. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. Amen. And will go in and out and find pasture. Amen. Let's go to John 14, verse 6. John 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Father, bless your word today. Today come and say what men can be said. Father, I am here to present the word, the word of God, not my word. Everything that comes from me, Father, we check it back. And everything that comes from you, let your people receive it. In the name of Jesus, I pray you may have a seat. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here this morning. Hallelujah. You guys are wonderful people. May God remember you every time and everywhere you go. So this morning, I'm... Um, I'm, I'm going to be talking about um, is we are we are uh, our theme this year is gate door hallelujah uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, how to have access to a door hallelujah and my title this morning will be access to dominion in the kingdom of God. I'm going to explain that and break that down for you. Amen. And I hope God will help you. Hallelujah. So one thing I want to I want to start off with the explanation of dominion. Amen. And then I'm going to explain everything that comes next. Dominion is explained as the power or right of controlling something. Hallelujah. It is also explained as a land or a domain or domain subject to control. So it means that when we are talking about dominion, it's like, uh, for example, let's say a physician, medical physician, he knows how to take care of people. That's his domain. So when we come to the kingdom of God, as you are, for example, a nurse or a physical, a, phys uh, a medical, phys a medical uh, doctor, whatever, it means that you understand everything that has to do with that field. Okay, so if you are a teacher of a school, it means you know how to teach children or student. That's your domain. That's what we are talking about today. So when you have your domain, you have to master your domain. That's what I want to talk about today. So in order for you to master your domain, you have to discover what is your domain. Hallelujah. Once you understand what your domain is, you are not going to try to copy somebody else. You are going to be the original version of yourself. Hallelujah. Nowadays, people copy one another. I remember when we were, you know, in this country, everybody was doing this. Amen? Me, I'm a computer guy. So, but at that time, they were making money doing that. But I refuse. I say, I do not want to do that because of money. I want to do something that I really like. Even though it's not well paid. Say amen to that. Say amen to that. 
one parenthesis. If everybody is doing the if everybody is doing the same thing, who will do other things? Hallelujah. If this morning you all come here and have a microphone to preach, who's going to listen? That's the same thing. Everybody cannot be nurse. Everybody cannot be teacher. Everybody cannot be oh, whatever. God has created us to be something. God has created us to master a domain. So as you leave your domain and try to do something that is not yours, you fail. Let me explain to you. People think that when you have money in the thing you are doing, you are succeeding. No, 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 no. You cannot have, you might not have money and feel happy more than somebody who has money. But he's working is in domain that is not his. Am I making sense to you? So to embrace your domain is a personal decision. I cannot force you to do what you don't want to do. Even if a man of God come and say, this is what God has called you to do. You have to be in accord with what a man of God says. Say, okay, I will do it. Some people reject that. I have seen that. Hallelujah. When you see the example of the prodigal son in the book of Luke, Luke 15. The Bible says that he left the house. And he told his father, give me my portion so that I can leave this place. Hallelujah. But he took everything and he left. And I'm going to summarize. In, this, in verse 17, the Bible said that. He, he, before 17, he went and he he, he kind of used everything and then he come broke. And he was working for somebody who was not even giving him what he needed to eat. And the Bible said, when he comes to himself, he said, I'd rather be slave in the house of my father than being nothing in somebody else's house. What is, what is he saying? He's saying, I would rather be doing or be where God wants me to be. Instead of being where people look me and see that I am looking good. Looking good to people is good. But looking good for God is better. Hallelujah. All we trying to do or some of us trying to do most of the time is to look good for people. Hallelujah. As you are looking God good to people, are you looking good to God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, before you embrace your domain, it's a personal decision. I cannot force you. She cannot force you. But you have to come to yourself and say, this is what I want to do. As you are, you come to yourself, it means you are getting into your own identity. Let me show you something in the Bible about identity. Can we go to Genesis 1 verse 26? I have explained here in the past before, but I want to explain one more time. The Bible says, then God said, let us make men in our own image to our likeness and let them have what? Dominion. Over the flesh or whatever, whatever. Let's go now to verse 28. Then, when God 
was done created a man. He said, then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful. Fill the earth and subdue it. And have what? So I'm going to explain myself. In verse 26, when God created you, he created you with the ability to have dominion. But it was not enough for God. As he sees you with the ability to have dominion, in verse 28, he bless you again with the power of dominion. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody here? So, that's what we call double-double. You have the ability to have dominion in you, in your DNA. Now God say, let all the angels around you bless you with dominion again. So that you will never lack what dominion is in your life. When you look in the Bible, that's the only thing God has blessed people twice with. So it means it is very important for God, not for him to have dominion, but for us to have dominion. Are we having dominion? We are going there. Hallelujah. That's what I want you to understand first. You have been created. Your DNA. Your flesh. Everything that makes you. Has dominion in it. Now God say. I bless you again with dominion. Am I making sense to you? I didn't make it up. It's in the Bible. Are we okay with that? So that's your identity. Your identity is for you to have dominion. Not over people, but over everything God has created. Because you will understand in the Bible that God did not create men at the first place. He created everything men need before he created a man. It means that everything you need before you come in this world is already there. Am I making sense to you? Everything that you need to succeed in your life is already there. There is nothing new that you would do to impress God. There is no other prayer that you can make for God to go back and, and create more stuff for you. Everything that you need is already there. But are we all, do we always know what those things are? That's why we are here today. Because we need to discover what those things are. As you discover what they are, you know who you are. We are talking about door. Jesus say, I am the door. That's a statement. When you see that, he say, I am the door. Come on. It, can, we put, can we put that on the board, please? I like to explain. Because people will be like, hey, where did you see that? John 10 verse 9. Are we all seeing the same thing? It's a sentence. That sentence is not mixed with any other sentence. Jesus said, I am the door. The way I understand English. When somebody say, I am the door. It means that's the only door. He did not say, I am that door. Or he did not say, I am a door. When I say I am a door, it means there are other doors. But how come Jesus with that statement, you know, in French, we say, can, 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 when we say I am the door, you say it, and then you look at people and you say that. <laughs> That's the statement of Jesus. He said, I am the door. Now, look at what he said. If Anyone, he did not say the children of God. 
That's where we are messing up. He did not say the children of this world or whatever. He said, if anyone's enter thy door by me. You, you know, in other versions, I look up here, they say, if you enter through that door. Amen. He said, you will be saved. It's not going being saved and go to heaven. That's not all. Oh, no, my, my people. He, when he say you will be saved, let me explain that in French. <laughs> you know, there's no other way that you can explain something other than your native language. But I'll go, I'll, 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 I'll do the English one. He say, en français, on dit tu es sauvé. You know? When God put Noah and his children in the boat or in the ark, they were eight, but they were saved. Hallelujah. When you give your life to Jesus, you were saved. So why do you need to go through a door before you've been saved again? So it means that save is more than what we think. Am I capturing your attention here? He says, when you go through that door, you are saved. If you are able, no matter what happened in this world, no matter what you are going through, no matter what is happening in your life, no matter what people are saying about you. No matter how bad people treat you. Jesus does not mention nothing of that. He did not say if you suffer, you suffer. And then you are tired of people. What? No, no, no. He said if. It was as if Jesus did not care about nothing we are going through. All he cares about. When you go through that door, that's the solution of everything. So it means that as you are suffering, it means that as you are in that poverty, it means that as you are that broke, it means that as you are that sick, it means that as you are that healed, as soon as you see that door and go through it, you are safe. Hallelujah. Now how to find that door? Oh, some people maybe has already find that door. Amen. Being saved here is not being saved to go to heaven only. It's being saved in your mind. In your mind. Because as soon as you get saved in the way Jesus is talking about, People can hit you, but it will not hurt you. People can insult you, but it will not hurt you. In French, they say, it's the back of the dog. You're not hurting him. A dead shit. The Bible that I always try to understand, but let's go with the detail here. Am I losing someone here? Okay, good. So, how do we find that door? That's the question we ask all the time. We cannot find that door. We cannot find that door as you are complaining. You cannot find that door as you are always mad about everything. You cannot find that door as you have jealousy like crush in your mind. You know, some people, they try to become somebody else. Or they look, I mean, I want to give an example. But let's say, for example, you know, <laughs> don't, don't, don't hit me. Let's say, for example, this, this person here, you know, sub Beyonce performing. All you want to do is to be like her. Why? 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 
do you think that be like her make you a better person? So this is what I call low self-esteem. Because you believe that the person has so much that you need to copy a little bit to make your... We cannot all look like. If everybody is like same color, same ties, everything here, I'll be talking to her and then when I'll go outside, I'll be like, it was you I was talking to? God is not stupid. He makes different for a reason. For us to know each other. So as you are trying to be like somebody else, you are fooling yourself. God knows you, but us human beings, we see you as somebody else. But God wanted us to see you as you. But because you have change your you, you become somebody, something else that we are seeing with our eyes. Hallelujah. Say, I have to be me. Say to yourself, I have to be me. God has created you to be you. God has not created you to be somebody else. It's impossible. God cannot make a mistake. Am I talking to somebody? All right. I'm trying to not shock you, okay? So, our life is full of mystery. I have watched a video when a man he took he took a picture of her daughter from age zero every day until age eighteen. When you put day one and day two together, it's the same thing. When you put day three and day four together, it's the same thing. When you put day five and day six together, it's the same thing. But when you put day six and day one together, they look different. There is something about that God. There is something about that God that we cannot understand unless we go before him. So to find that door... It is impossible for you to stay at your own or be doing your own thing and discover that God. You have to go before him. You have to be praying. You have to have a fellowship with God. A fellowship with God is not when you, we come to church on Sunday. A fellowship with God is not when you, you sing a, a worship song in your car. A fellowship with God is like when you if you, you if you have been in love once, you 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 only think about that person. That's the same thinking we have to have when it comes to the Holy Spirit. Am I talking to somebody? If you have not been in love, it will come. But if you have been in love, the only thing you think about is that person. This is how God wants us to think about him. The more you think about him, the more he reveals to you. Hallelujah. To find that door, we have to have a fellowship, a personal relationship that we develop with God every day. You cannot look for that door once and say, you know what? I am tired. When you say, I am tired, you are telling yourself, the project that God has for me, I'm not interested. Whatever good God has for me, I'm not interested. The little that I have right now, I have a little car, I have a house, or whatever, that's enough for me. That's also being selfish. 
Because you suppose or we supposed to be a blessing for others. The Bible say, pray for your enemy. Why the Bible will say pray for your enemy? Because you have the key for prayer that your enemy does not have. The Bible say, what I want is the wicked to be saved. God does not want anybody to die. So, do you know if your prayer can save the enemy that you believe is the enemy? It might be your enemy, but it might not be the enemy of God. What we call enemy is what we see. The enemy, number one, is the devil. We know all that. But it is wrong to see everybody at your job place, in your family, everywhere. You just have enemy everywhere. The only thing you cannot do is to become your own enemy. If you are able to do that, you will become your own enemy. Today, I want you to think twice. If you have enemy, make peace with them. I do not say go to your enemy place and eat for them. And eat with them. No, 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 no. Your enemy is Satan. Your enemy are not people. Am I talking to somebody? When you put everybody in the same thing, you know, this is what we do in Africa. If you have been hurt with somebody from, let's say, from, with, from Benin, anytime we see somebody else from Benin, you believe that that's, that person is the same thing. This is wrong. I used to do that. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you are hurt, because you were in love and the person walked like this. As you starting dating somebody, if the person make a mistake, starting walking like this, you be like, oh, 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 I have seen those signs before. <laughs> and, you know, when it comes to women, they say, oh, I have that feeling that I am making the wrong choice again. Hallelujah. Feel free. I'm not saying that you you go with, you know, you close your eyes and you go. But give everybody a chance. Hallelujah. As God has always given us a chance to be us. Why is it going to be impossible for us to give a chance to somebody else to be, to be, to be them? Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere. Let's go to John 15, verse 7. Please. I can read it. The Bible says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. So, there is... A condition and a requirement that God has put in that one sentence. He said, the first thing you do, you abide in me. It means you depend on me. You abide in me. And now, my word. You see the S is not one, it's not only one word. My words abide in you. It means when the words of God abide in you, when they say don't do it, it means don't do it. If the word abides in you, when they say do it, it means do it. You know, I have seen people when they say, give tight or give first fruit, they want to understand from a different path what is the meaning of that. Instead of going to the Bible and see what that means. So what we are doing, we are looking for a different thing other than what we heard. Because that part, we don't like it. But because we don't like it, we want to make sure that we find something that aligns with what we are thinking. Oh, we are fooling ourselves big time. When they say, don't do it, 
for example, they told you, it's not for everybody. Some people, the men of God say, you need to stop fornication. I was, I was part of that too in my life. But then you go to your, your friend, you ask him, he says, ah, me, hey, yo, that's what I do. You say, you see my pastor, he does not like me. The word was not for your brother. It was for you. So that word, you have to abide by that word. The Bible does not say, let your friend abide by that word and you watch him. The Bible says, you, yourself. Those are the requirements that we need to have before we find and enter that door. So when you are here, we are at church and we spend time praying. Pastor is praying here. Sometimes I pity pastor because sometimes he'll be like, bah, 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 bah. But some, some, we, some people, you know, we are, we, are all, we, are, we are all guilty. You live here, he said, don't do something. The next thing you do when you get your car, <laughs> you say what the pastor said today. I don't even know if he was, he was in the spirit. He was praying to, hallelujah. You are just rejecting the word. And then you are telling God, keep your door. I'm not making sense to you. Those are the little things we do and we think it's funny. We think that we are we we, we, we understood, but we are fooling ourselves. Those are the little things, but those are the things that are very important to God. Abide by the word of God. That's why it is very important for all of us to always read our Bible. We don't need to wait until we come to church and then we read the Bible. Am I making sense to you? He said, abide. Some people think that Jesus is like, when you say, in the name of Jesus, it won't happen. Why? Because he said, if you abide in me, and my word abides in you, then you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done to you. So it means, everything you have not done before asking, you ask, but you did not meet the requirements. Let me say it again. He said, abide in me and obey my voice. That's what it means, abide in my word. When the Bible says don't, it means don't. When the Bible says do, it means do. So when you don't obey that, you ask, Father, give me a husband. Oh, you will wait for 100 years. You say, Father, give me a car. Oh, you will wait for 10 years. Why? And then you see other people, you say, I pay my title. I come to church every time. I'm always on time. But look at this guy. He's always late. Sometimes he does not even come to church. But you don't know how much that person abides in the word of God. All we are looking at is the outside. The Bible said that one old lady, he came and he gave just a little. But Jesus said that she has given more than everybody. There is another guy, he was praying. He said, God, look at me. I pay my title. Look at that person. But the other person, the Bible said he couldn't even look up to heaven. He said, Father, have mercy on me. I am not even worthy to be in your presence. And Jesus said, who do you think God is listening to? Sometimes we are in those positions and we don't even know. We are praying and showing God or other people that we pray. But God is not even looking at you. So if God is not even looking at us, how can you hear us? <laughs> you are wasting your time. And you go home you say, every Friday we pray. We've been praying for years. Nothing happened. Situation did not change. Nothing has not changed. Ah, 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 ah. One thing I have understood with God. When I see somebody blessed, I know that God is blessing people in this place. You don't need to see in you before you believe. When you see somebody being blessed, you know that this place here, God is blessing people. Some people, when they come, and the men of God pray with the, with the anointing. And the anointing fall on people. Some will say, mm, how come those are the only people who feel the anointing? I don't feel that anointing. Huh? You have to tell yourself, 
if they are feeling it, one day I will feel it too. If they are receiving it, one day I will receive it too. That's the attitude we have to have. Instead of having the attitude, mm, 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 that's jealousy. You are already disqualified to enter that door. Say amen to that. I did not write that down. But I'm receiving information and knowledge myself. I'm being honest with you. Because those are the things when you don't know. You are messing up your own life without knowing that you are messing up your life. And you are not being blessed because you are your own enemy. But you look at other people as your enemy. But the enemy you have to look is yourself. Say amen to that. <laughs> Father, have mercy. You. We are going somewhere. I, I'm moving on. I don't want to get stuck. The Bible said that. Let's go to John 10, verse 9. I will show you something quick. And then we'll go somewhere else. The Bible said that. I am the door. Okay? I'll come to everything you know, to explain. If anyone enter by me, he will be saved. And he will go in and out. Hallelujah. You remember Deuteronomy 28? God said, I will bless you in and I will bless you out. Jesus said here, you will go in. So, your going in is blessed. Your coming out of that door is blessed. But you have to find that door. This is what is beyond that door. Let me explain something to you. This morning, God has given me something. I was like, oh man, this is complicated. When we pray, and we say, God, open the door. Yeah, he will open it. But can we find that door? God, open the door, open the door, open. Yes. But the door is open. But do you know where that door is? When God gives you grace and you see that door. For example, let's say, for example, here is the door. And God say, I open the door. When you enter that door, what are you going to do? Are you going to sit down? So you have to have Something you are looking for before you enter that door. Otherwise, you're going in and you're coming out will be the same thing. You go into the door and you remain the same person. God visited you, but nothing has ever changed in you. That's what happened. As you are praying, you know who you are. You know that God has created you or this is your calling, or this is what you want to do. So as you enter that door, those are the things you look for. You don't look to be better than the person next to you. You don't look to be buy a better car than the person. That's the wrong idea. Am I making sense to you? So, when the door is there, when they open the door, you get into the door, Right? If I open that door, the next time you come, am I going to open again? So, you will come and I open again. You can come one day and be like, you know what? Today I don't want to open the door for you. Have you ever received people in your house? You look to the door and be like, <laughs> But that person came in your house before. Have you, have you ever done that? You look through the door, you're like, it's fine. I'm not here. Happy birthday. You look through that door, you'll be like, I don't want to open the door. So it means you were able to enter through that door before. But today, because of the way you are, they don't open the same door for you. But there is a difference. When it comes to God, I want you to understand today. That was my prayer all day this morning. When God opened the door, 
pray for him to give you access. Amen. When he gives you access, you don't need him to go into the door again. For example, if you come to my house and I give you access to everything, I give you a key. Even if I am in the bathroom, when you come, you can open the door. Even if I am not there, but you still come, you can still open the door. So it means that when you have full access to that door, God gives you a key. And that key belongs to you. That key is the name of Jesus. And when you pray, you say in the name of Jesus, Jesus answer, no matter where he is. How many kisses to you? That key is the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's what we call full access. Unlimited access. You come day, you pick. You come night, you go. But the good thing about having unlimited access is like, my sister told me, oh, this is what I'm looking for. And then I've been praying, I've been praying. Oh, don't worry, I'll pray for you. You go to your unlimited access. You say, Father, this is what she needs. That's your prayer. It's not like you go there and you come and give. It's because God can hear you better than God can hear her. But because God can hear you better than God can hear her, you don't come to her and say, oh, ah, really? You've been praised? It's not working? My sister, I'm so sad for you. Uh, uh -uh, That's pride. No, no. You'll be like, oh, my sister, let let us pray together. You don't brag and say, oh, me, when I pray, ah, (laughs) I open my mouth. When I open my mouth, God answer already. No, no, no. You see, my sister. Let, that's, that's what I call humility. You be wise with what you do. You say, Father, you, you say, my sister, let's, let us pray. Let us pray. But you know that you will go before God. You know that you will fast for that sister because you have done the same thing and it worked for you. So you want to do the same thing for her, for her to receive the same thing. That's why God said, love your neighbor. He did not say, love yourself. He said, love your neighbor. As you love your neighbor, you want her to receive the same thing that you receive. Because we do not receive that unlimited access because of our heart. Because God knows that today, if he gives you that unlimited access, ah, people of God, last, last night, God visited me. The power of God was so great, was so powerful, and I can feel in the room that God was there with me. People don't care about that. I mean, when men of God say that, I don't listen. Because... What is my business when it comes to you being visited? Your business is when God visited me, I think if you are able to do it for me, do for my sister. Those are the people God bless with unlimited access. And when you have unlimited access, you have dominion. Your dominion does not come when you only, you only do what you want to do for yourself. Your dominion comes when you are overflowing and you see that it is too much, I need to share. But when you say I need to share, it comes naturally. That's why you see some men of God, they say, you are healed. You go home, you are really healed. Some men of God say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Huh? And you are not healed. Ah, there's no access. So. Access is not given to everybody. When you have access, you have dominion. But before, when you have that dominion, God will make sure that you have wisdom. Without wisdom, you will never have a dominion. You may have dominion on the things of the world. You can be a nurse and be good when it comes to the to your job. You can be a teacher and be good when it comes to the to the things of the teacher. But when it comes to the things of God, it's different. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. And everything that you've been looking for will be added to you. How come? It means that when you find that door, everything becomes easy. You can spend hours, years looking for that door. But when you find that door, everything you have lost 
will be restored to you. Because that door, when you get into that door, it's a supernatural thing. It means supernatural activity will start taking place in your life. You don't call people, they call you and they say, oh, this is what I want to do for you. And you, you ask yourself, man, I did not call you, but God called them. God fight for you. You don't fight for yourself. God will give you stuff you did not ask for. God will bless you things you did not pray for. God will give you things you didn't even want. Because God knows that as long as I give that thing to you, you will find the right person to give that to. That's how it overflows in your life. You are not greedy. When you receive, you share. When it comes to giving, you give. When it comes to helping people, you help. Why would God not give you the access? Because he knows your heart. He knows what is in your heart. Hallelujah. You cannot receive something. God will never give you something you cannot manage. That's why people are still broke. Because you cannot manage money. The little you have, you go to the mall and you spend them all. And you believe God will give you a million when you cannot spend, you cannot, I mean, return tax is coming. You know, that thing is so, it's so, it's so, I mean, I'm, I, I was not, I did not grow up here, but I found that so miserable. When people receive their return, all they want to do is to spend the money. That's the man, that's the poverty mentality. Yeah. That's the poverty mentality. If you are here, you do that. Don't do that again. Use your money wisely. Because God sent that back to you for a reason. But you keep on spending that money for nothing. A clothes you will buy, you put one, and tomorrow you don't even like it. Does that happen to you? You look at something, the the clothes is so nice. You be like, ah, man, this is too beautiful. You buy, you put it on one, the next thing you know, you don't like it anymore. Hallelujah. I'm not saying to not shop. No, 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 no. That's not the mentality. The mentality is don't spend because you want to spend. Don't spend because people are spending. Don't go to mall because people are going to mall and spend the money you don't need to spend. If you want to spend, invest. Yeah, do something with it. Make sure that that money in one month will bring you something back. Or put that in saving. They are saving online that people use. And they will give you 2, 2.1%, not the, the saving that you, of your bank. You know, like uh, American Express saving account, H. Like 2%. No, your old bank, like for example, West Fargo, it gives you 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.001%. Those aren't. No. You open Barclays saving account or American Express saving account. They give you money back. It is something. You put that money there and one day you remember that ah, this is project I can work on. This is something I can do. If you, if you have key, think about your key. Because one day you will have to pay for the college fee. Hallelujah. Yes. Think about doing something different. You can, we cannot be doing the same thing and expect a different result. Hallelujah. And, and the, the, the funny thing is <laughs> you don't know the value of something until you lose it. When the money is going to be like, oh, I could have done this with that money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Think backward. Hallelujah. I'm almost done. Give me five more minutes. Okay. Jesus is that door. The only door. He say, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. Jesus is the one who will take you through that door. He is that door, but he will take you through that door. Because he is the way. 
Why do you believe that his all oh, his way is the right way? Because he said, I am the truth. I'm not going to lie to you. When you follow me, you will find life and you will receive abundant life. John 10 10 say what? He said that. Can we put John 10 10? The, the next verse for this one. Next verse. He said, The thief does not come except to steal. So when you go through the wrong door, the little you have, the steal will take it from you. Not only he will take it from you, he will try to kill you because you 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 you, you come to the wrong place. But the, the good thing is, I mean, not the good thing, the funny thing is he will attract you to that door. Did you see what he did to Eve? He said, if you eat that fruit, you become like God. Did, did Eve become like God? That's what he does. He will trick you. Hallelujah. And then he will destroy you completely. But Jesus said, if you believe me that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. When you go through that door, not only you receive life, but you receive it abundantly. Amen. Can, can, we, can we put the amplifier version? You will see what it says. You see? He say, and you have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. So when it overflows, that's you being a blessing for other people. The way that he is a blessing for us because of his obedience, who we are here today. It could have taken him a no, and the church will not be here, baby. Hallelujah. Who knows? But our obedience to the things of God matters to God. Because he will see that you are walking through that door. And as you are walking in the purpose and in the things that God has put before you, you will go through that door. There's no way you can be walking in the things of God and not come into that door. It's not because we can sin. God knows our nature. We are not perfect. Nobody is perfect. You can, you can, you know, it happened. But it does not mean that God will disqualify us. Say, I will find that door. I will have access to that door. When you have access to that door, the Bible says, go, go back to verse 9, please. He said that you will go in and out. And what do you find? Pasture. What does that mean? Let me explain to you the way I receive it. Amen? Pasture here means your needs. Pasture, pasture, you know, am I pronouncing that too right? Pasture. Pasture here means the desire of your heart. Pasture here means everything you need to fulfill your destiny. Pasture here means everything you need to move forward. Pasture here means everything you need to become a blessing for others. So because you were able to find that door, other people are going to be blessed. Because somebody else has found the door we are here today. Hallelujah. That Pasture gives you the fullness of your life, yourself. It gives you a spiritual life in abundance. It gives you a physical life in abundance. It gives you a good health in abundance. It gives you a social life in abundance. You know what social life means? It's not like social media, no. It's like you have connection. You are here now, but you call somebody. 
can you give one million to that person for me? They say, yes, no problem. That's social connection. God can give you that. You know people who know people who know people. Until you get to what you want again. That's what I saw. I call connection. Connection is everything you can find when you come to that door. Behind that door, you have everything you need. Not because you want people to see you, but we want, you want God to be proud of who you have become. Am I making sense to you? This year, I want us to focus on the things of God more than the things of this world. This world tells you that when you reach a certain age, this is what you're supposed to have. But look at Abraham. Abraham was 75 years old when God called him. And God waited 25 more years to give him what he wants. Hallelujah. I'm not saying that we have to wait 25 more years. But I'm saying that everything with God come at the right time. It is not going to come in our time, but it's going to come in the time of God. This year, that's my prayer for you. Anything that you have, anything that you desire, let God give you dominion over it. So that you can master it and be able to be a blessing for others. So that you can understand it and be able to explain to others. So that you can receive it and be able to share with others. So that you can grab it and be able to give to others. Let that be our portion this year. Let us be able to be blessing to others. Let us be able to pray for others, for others to receive something. You know, it's not because you pray for the person and the person receives that you will tell God, come on, I pray for you and the person receives it. What about me? Don't worry about that. The Bible says, all you need to do is to seek first the kingdom of God. Everything that God wants to do right now, that's what has to be our preoccupation. That's what has to be our mindset. You have to tell yourself, what, do, what does God wants me to do today? That's what I want to do. What does God wants me to do this week? That's a, what I want to do. What does God wants me to do this month? That's what I want to do. What does God wants you to do this year? Let that be what you do this year. And you will prosper in everything. The Bible said that, God said that all I want is for you to prosper. He said the project I have for you is for you to prosper. So there's no way God will like you to fail. God wants you to succeed and have access. And when you have access, the dominion that you were born with, the dominion that you were blessed with, they come back to life. And they will be manifested in you. That's what I have for you today.